guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Friday and it's time for another video. Now today, I'm gonna to be talking about wallets. One of the questions that has come up over and over and over again on this channel, and what are the best wallets of all time? Which wallets would you recommend? What's the best wallets for what situation? I think it's probably the most commonly asked question. So in this video, I'm gonna count down the 15 best wallets of all time. Now, before I go into this list, there's a few things that you need to know. I'm not gonna be, perf be performing any of the routines with these wallets. My goal with this video is to kind of uh, highlight wallets that you might have seen before, you might not have seen before, and talk about why I like them. Over the next few weeks on Magic Lives, I'm going to be performing a whole bunch of routines with these wallets. Uh, they go up at six o'clock every single day. The reason I'm not going to be uh, performing a routine with each one of them today is because that's going to make this video about four and a half hours long. There's 15 wallets on this list. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, this is not a negative list. I'm not talking about any bad wallets. Now, I have got a wallet obsession. I have hundreds of wallets. I've been in Magic a long time and I have seen a billion different wallets. And at one point or another, I've used most of them. And I'm highlighting on this list the 15 best wallets. These are all wallets that are really good. Every single one of these wallets I still own, I would happily go and gig them. Now, I might not be using them at a gig at the moment, um, but I would happily go and get one and, and go and take it to a gig. All of the wallets on this list, I have gigged with them or at one point or another. At some point, I've actually gigged with them. Um, I have a very big repertoire. I like constantly changing my material around. I like constantly creating new material and working that in. And because of that, I'll change things around. A few weeks ago, Nexus was my favorite wallet. Right now, it's Orphic, and I'm creating a whole bunch of routines with Orphic. Uh, a few weeks ago, it was the Shadow Wallet. Before that, it was the... There's loads of wallets that I really like okay is the point I'm trying to make here so this is not a negative list these are all wallets that I would highly recommend the other thing that you need to know is all these wallets are still available some of them you're gonna to have to do a little bit of search for they're not available in dealers uh, sort of dealer shelves anymore they're not available directly through Murphy's maybe the creators sold all their stock they're not planning on doing any more but you still can get them uh, if you just search around. I did a search on all of these wallets. I did not want to include a wallet on here that I didn't think that you could get. So, it's a list from 15 up to one, and that's how I feel at the moment. But like I said, the, the wallet at number 15, that doesn't mean it's a bad wallet. It just means it's 15th on the list of a whole bunch of good wallets, if that kind of makes sense. And, and you know, on a week-by-week -week basis, my opinion on the order of this list would change around quite considerably. In fact, this list has already changed around many, many times I was putting it together. So there you go. That's what you're going to be looking for. You want live performances for these wallets. They're going to be dripped out over the next few weeks. But without further ado, the video that you've all been waiting for, the top 15 wallets of all time in the Magic community. So in number 15, we have the Terminator wallet, I'll Be Back, by Paul Wilson. This is very much a different wallet to anything else on this list. The Terminator wallet does not do a card to wallet, it does not do a peak, it does not do an out to lunch principle or anything like that. The Terminator wallet was created by Paul Wilson to do one thing and one thing only, which is to do a coin bend. And it did it very, very well. Now I love bending coins. Uh, for many, many years I used this wallet. Currently, I'm using CoinVex by David Penn just because this wallet took up an entire pocket. I personally think this is actually a better bend than, than CoinVex. It's, it, the misdirection to bend the coin is better than with CoinVex, but CoinVex is basically just a couple of Sharpies which you put in your top pocket, while this is a full wallet, and it was like a, a hip-style wallet. So I'd happily go and do it at a gig, but you know sometimes pocket space is limited. So what is the Terminator wallet? Like I said, it was designed to bend a coin. So the whole idea of it is you borrow a coin, you have the coin signed, you then take out a wallet and you put the wallet on top of the hand with the coin in and the coin goes directly into a bending device. In the action of opening the wallet up to take out a five pound note or whatever that you're going to take out, that bends the coin in your hand. You hand a note to somebody, you then close the wallet, put it away. The coin is bent. The signed coin is now bent with no manipulation at all from your part. The move happens when they're staring at the wallet, but they don't see anything. You then take the five pound note back, 
you wrap the uh, the coin up in the five pound note, you get them to hold on to everything, and then the coin bends in their hands. It's a really clever way of doing a coin bend. Like I say, there are other ways of doing a coin bend, but genuinely, this is one of the best ways I've ever seen. Uh, this was, uh, I think, I think, I think, I might be wrong, but I think this was uh, created uh, by Joe Pauper too. Uh, Paul Wilson specifications, but it's a great wallet. You can still get it. If you're looking for a really good coin bend and you can sacrifice one complete pocket for a wallet, then this is actually a really good coin bend to go for. It can be a borrowed coin and it could bend thicker coins than something like Coinbex or Quantum Bender or something like that because of how it worked. You know, it was almost like opening a vice. Uh, so it's great. It's the Terminator wallet. It's designed to bend coins, and that is at position number 15. At position number 14, we have the Gentleman Jack wallet. Now, what is the Gentleman Jack wallet? Well, it's marketed by Alakazam Magic. The Gentleman Jack is, in my opinion, the best Himba wallet on the market. It is a wallet that looks just like a billfold wallet. It looks like a normal wallet. It will function as a normal wallet if you want it to, but it is actually a, uh, it's actually a gimmick wallet. It's actually a Himba wallet uh, built into like a billfold style wallet. It's a very, very clever design. Now, if you have ever seen me do my pseudo pickpocketing routine, and I've done it a few times on Magic Lives, or I think I did a commentary once on the 5x5s, five five uh, I do a pseudo pickpocketing routine with an extreme burn and a wallet. This is the wallet that I have always used for that routine. This is the wallet I will continue to use for that routine. And in that routine, I have uh, I have the extreme burn, which I take out. Uh, well, first of all, I take out this wallet, Gentleman Jack. I show that there's receipts in there. I close it up, put it into their hand. Um, sorry, I show there's a hundred pound in there and twenty pound notes. I close it up, I put it into their hand, and then take out an extreme burn gimmick, and I show their receipts. I flick and change them into £20 notes. And then when they look back into the wallet uh, that they've been holding the whole time, they'll find the uh, uh, inside the wallet now is the receipts and you've done kind of a transposition. It's a really cool routine. It's one that I love performing. In fact, when we were right in the middle of all the different lockdowns over here in the UK and I was doing nothing but virtual shows, this was a big part of my virtual show because I found I could put the Gentleman Jack wallet on the table for everybody to watch and I could keep it in full view. I could come really close to the screen to do the extreme burn change and then I could go back and get the wallet and it was never taken out of view. But it's also a routine that works really well in the real world as well. But forget about the routine. If you're wanting a Himba wallet, this is, in my opinion, the best Himba wallet you'll ever see. It looks like a real wallet. It functions like a real wallet. And it's just really, really cool. So there you go. That is the Gentleman Jack. In 13th position, we have the Speed Loader Plus. Uh, this uh, came out many, many years ago by Anthony Miller, who has bought out a lot of wallets over the years, and I own pretty much all of them, and all of them are very good. This is the only Anthony Miller wallet that made the list. Now, this has recently been bought back out again by Mark Mason at JB Magic, and it's called the Speed Loader Plus wallet because it is basically uh, designed to load very, very easily. It's got a very unique method to load. The whole top flap sort of um, d d folds back. So it's almost impossible to not be able to load that card immediately into the wallet. What you're getting here mainly is a card to wallet. Now, the negative with it is it's quite a bulky wallet. It's not too bulky. It looks like a sort of a billfold style wallet, but it's a little bit bulkier than some of the thinner wallets that I'm gonna be talking about a little bit later on. And a lot of the more modern wallets are thinner wallets. So there's that to bear in mind. Uh, but other than that, it's a really, really, really good wallet. And the re-release comes with a whole bunch of routines by Mark Mason and some of Mark's friends. Uh, some of them are great, some of them are not so great. But the bottom line is this is a very good wallet. Now, one thing that I hear from people when I get feedback on the various videos I do is that they don't like having to use a guide to load a, a card into a wallet, into a card to wallet. They'd rather just have it go straight in there. And some of the, I don't have a problem with that for various different reasons. Uh, some of the wallets that we're going to be talking about later on, they do need a guide. If you don't like using a guide, 
this is a great wallet to go for. You don't need a guide. It literally is right there. You can load it within a split second and take it right out. You can even wrap it around with elastic bands and you can have it wrapped around with elastic bands. So as you take it out, there's elastic bands all over the wallet. You take the elastic bands out and still the card's got in there. Uh, the other thing you need to bear in mind is really this, this wallet has only one function, which is that of a card to wallet. If you're wanting a wallet that does a little bit of everything, this might not be the one that you want to go for. Uh, because it just does card to wallet, but it does it really, really well. If you want a highly well-made wallet that will not let you down, that you can load very quickly for a card to wallet routine, then absolutely you should be looking at uh, you should be looking at the Speed Loader Plus. You can get it well from all good Magic dealers because it's uh, it's gone out through Murphy's Magic, but it's created by J JB Magic, Anthony Miller, and marketed by Mark Mason. In number 12, we have the Wiser Wallet. Now, myself and Ryland reviewed the Wiser Wallet well over a year ago now. It's been created by Danny Wiser. Uh, Danny Wiser has created a whole bunch of stuff over the years. Uh, this is, uh, this is what, uh, probably the only wallet that he's ever created. It was, uh, I think it was uh, marketed by Vortex Magic, but I could be wrong. And what the Wiser Wallet is, basically, there's a few things that you can do with it. It's basically a Himba style wallet, but what's interesting about this is it's got a flash appearance of a playing card or whatever you want to have in there, but mainly a playing card. So you basically, it looks like a billfold wallet to open up the wallet and it looks like a billfold wallet. And in the action of shaking that wallet, the card just appears there out of nowhere. And the reason is it's a little bit like a Himba wallet, but the opening, the, the way that the Himba wallet works is all to do with magnets and gravity. So literally, and I'm genuinely serious, it's that visible. You just take the wallet, you open it up, you show it's empty, you shake it and the, the card appears inside there. Now, the negative is it's not a proper card to wallet wallet. So you're not gonna be able to load a signed card in there without a little bit of routining structure, which you can probably add if you wanted to. Um, but you know, there's lots of different options with that. You could use an intercessor by Gate and Bloom. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different stuff that you can do to try and negate the fact that it's not a signed card. But if you're wanting a visual appearance in a wallet, this is great for like big tables because they can see this from a distance and it changes the moment that the magic happens. Normally with a card to wallet, you take out the wallet and you open it up and you, you open up the wallet and inside the card. With this, they see the wallet's empty and boom, the card appears. Now, it's a very interesting take on the Himba wallet and it's well worth looking at. It's well worth, it's one of those wallets. Uh, it's one of those tricks that's really uh, fun to play with. You know, like you get one of those tricks and you like messing around with the gimmicks and it's like super fun to play with. That's what we have here. It's a very fun trick to play with. Um, so yeah, that's the, um, that's the Wiser wallet. It's at number 12. It's available from all good magic dealers and it was created by Danny Weiser. In 11th position, we have the FPS wallet, the FPS wallet, uh, which is by Brent Braun. And again, myself and Ryland reviewed this a little bit recently. The FPS wallet is a really good wallet. For a while, this was my main wallet and then the Shadow wallet came out and the Shadow wallet superseded the FPS wallet. Um, but I would more than happily pick up the FPS wallet and go and gig with it immediately. Now, there's a few advantages of the FPS wallet. First of all, it appears underneath the ID compartment of the wallet, which I always like. Second of all, the load is really clever. There's a few different ways of doing the load, but you can actually, uh, they've got this really nice idea of loading the card directly from the table, which is really super smart. Um, but it's also a very easy wallet to load into from the pocket as well, if you've got a palm card. All of that is very, very useful. Uh, and when the card is inside the ID compartment, it is very difficult to pull out. It's almost like, how could he have possibly got it in there? It's almost like it's stuck in place. The other thing about this wallet, which is really good, is there's plenty of space to put money, to put credit cards, which is really important. So that's a, a really important consideration when you're, when you're working on a wallet, especially if you want that wallet to be, uh, to be a part of your everyday carry. Um, yeah, so that's the FPS wallet. It's by Brent Braun. And as you would expect with Brent Braun, the instructions for this wallet are absolutely amazing. The tutorial is absolutely amazing. He leaves no stone unturned. So yeah, it's called the, uh, it's called the FPS wallet. It's by Brent Braun and uh, it's available from all good magic dealers. Uh, it's 
a great card to wallet. Doesn't really do anything else, but if you're looking for a good card to wallet, this is a good one to go for. It's slightly more modern looking than the Speed Loader. If you want a difference between uh, the Speed Loader and the, uh, the FPS wallet, the FPS wallet looks a little bit more of a modern wallet. In 10th position, 10th position, we have the F1 Nitro wallet, which is, again is by Alakazam. For many, many years, Alakazam were like the magic dealer when it came to wallets. Um, but yeah, the, FP, uh, the, uh, the F1 wallet is great. It's a very, basically it's a card to wallet. That's what we have here. Now there's a bunch, of, as you would expect with Alakazam, there's a bunch of routines that uh, uh, Peter has included on the project and, and the team of Alakazam have included on the project that allow you to do predictions and coincidence effects and this and that and the other. But in essence, it's a card to wallet. And the reason it's called the F1 Nitro wallet is because it literally loads so quickly. You, do, you can put the wallet on the table from the beginning. So you can put the wallet on the table from the beginning. You can have the card picked, have the card signed. Uh, and literally in the action of just picking up that wallet and just putting it over the deck for a split second, you won't even tell that it's gone anywhere near the deck. In that moment, you've, you've loaded the card into the wallet, basically. It's a very unique method. It's very different. A lot of the time with wallets, they kind of follow the same basic pattern. And it's, well, which one's better made? Which one suits you the best? This one is a very unique method. Now, the disadvantage to the F1 Nitro is you do need to have a gimmick set up in your deck as well. You couldn't just take a regular deck of cards that's unprepared, put a wallet down on the table, and immediately go into this routine. You need something set up in the deck as well. That's something to bear in mind, but you can have that set up and then you can do this routine. You're left with a regular deck of cards and it is a very quick load. Very unique method, very quick load. And also you could literally do this naked because you don't need a pocket. You don't need anything to put the wallet into. Um, so if you're looking to perform as a nudist colony and you're desperate to do carding wallet, this might be the one you want to go for. It's also a fun wallet to play around with. So if you, uh, when you see the technique and you see the method, uh, it's something that's really fun and you'll probably come up with other ideas for it as well. And the tutorial is really good. Like I said before, there's a whole bunch of routines that the guys at Alakazam put together, uh, as you would expect with their products. So yeah, it's really good. It's called the F1 Nitro Wallet and it's highly recommended. That is the wallet that's in 10th position. Right, in ninth place, we have a very unique wallet by Paul Wilson. This is the second wallet by Paul Wilson on this list that is very, very unique. This one is called the Predator Wallet. Now, again, just like the Terminator Wallet, the Predator Wallet is not a card to wallet. It's not a peaking device. It is designed to do one thing and one thing. And the one thing it does, it does really well, which is to do an incredible mentalism routine. Uh, which I did for years and years and years. Uh, I retired it a few years ago, but that does not mean it's an incredible routine. I would happily pick up my Predator Wallet and do it again tomorrow. And the last time I saw uh, Steve Della enter and win a competition, which was at the, uh, the Wolverhampton Magic Circle, he actually included the Predator Wallet in his competition act. And, you know, you get somebody like Steve Della who's using that wallet. Well, that speaks volumes as to what this trick is like. Uh, what is it? Well, let me very quickly break down what you get with the Predator Wallet, what the routine is. Um, you show your wallet, you open it, it's a billfold style wallet, and you open it up and you show that you've got three uh, $1 bills in there, for example, okay? And uh, you say you're going to bet them $3. And you take $1 out and you put it down on the table and you say, think of a playing card, I'm going to tell you what the card is. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a heart. It's not a heart. Oh, darn. What was it? It was a diamond. Uh, oh, I was close. Okay, I bet you another dollar I can get the value. It's a six. Am I wrong? Oh, what is it? It's a 10. Oh, I'm really sorry. I've got one last, look, this is my last dollar bill. This is my last one. I'm going to bet you this one final last dollar bill that I can prove I knew what your card was the entire time. And you say, look, I've had a business card here in my pocket the entire time. If this business card had your card written on it, would that be good? And they say, yes. And you turn around and it's got your card on it. And they're not very impressed and the whole thing falls flat on its ass until you say, but you, we've had these three dollar bills here from the very, very beginning. Uh, let's just turn them over. And on the first dollar bill, it says whatever the card is. So the first one says 10, the second one says of, and the third one says diamonds. And the, the writing on the back of the dollar bills spell out exactly what their freely thought of card is. 
uh, and then you just put the uh, you put the dollar bills back in the wallet and you reset, ready to go to the next table. It's a genuinely thought of card. It changes every single time. Um, it's great. It's amazing. It's typical, brilliant Paul Wilson thinking. It's um, yeah, it's just really good. The only negative is it's a Bill Fold style wallet, like the like the uh, like the Terminator wallet, and it's going to take a whole pocket. But it, other than that, it is completely self-contained. You can actually keep the business card that I mentioned with the your card gag on it. You can keep that inside the wallet as well. Everything is completely self-contained, and it is a bit of a magician fooler. Uh, it's a it's a great routine. It really is. Um, so if you but, but it's not a card to wallet. It's not a peak device. It's nothing like that. If you're wanting a peak device or a card to wallet look somewhere else if you want a really cool mentalism routine that's a great opener then you might want to consider the predator wallet that routine i described to you is how that trick plays every single time in eighth position we have the four scene wallet by matthew wright four as in f-o-u-r four scene wallet by matthew wright and matthew is somebody else who's bought out some amazing wallets over the years i know he's got another wallet coming out soon at some point in 2022 another wallet uh, but this four scene wallet he bought out probably about 10 years ago now and i have used it on and off over the last 10 years and it's great. It has so many features to it. So it has a peak built into it. It has a card to wallet built into it. It has a no palm card to wallet built into it. But the feature that I loved most about it is that it has the ability, you have the ability to give four business cards out to people and have them think of something. So the first person can think of, for example, a city that they want to go to. The second person can think of uh, their best friend at school. The third person can think whatever you want to do. Four people think of four completely different things. They put them inside the wallet in four different places, right next to credit cards. You can see that they're going into four completely different places. And then literally you put the wallet down and you've got access to all of that information immediately. You've got access to all of that information immediately. I mean, how killer is that? I think it's really important that when people bring out a new wallet these days, it adds something. You know, what's the point in bringing out another card to wallet that uses exactly the same load, but it is made slightly thinner or it's made slightly whatever it may be? There's no point in that at all. What we have here is we have something that really kind of added something. And what it added is the ability to have this incredible peak of four people's information. And I used this for many, many years in parlor and cabaret. And I used to do it like that. I had four people think of information, put it in the wallet, put the wallet down and one at a time, I'd tell them what they were thinking of. It's, uh, it's very cool. It's very, very cool. It's well worth getting because as well as having that incredible feature, it also had a card to wallet built in. It also had a whole bunch of other stuff built into it as well. So you could have it in your pocket and you'd be good to go. The only disadvantage is it was a pretty big wallet. I mean, that's the only negative about it. It's a big wallet. It's the sort of wallet that if you pulled out at a gig, people would be like, oh, you know, uh, 2020 called. Uh, I think it's about time you get yourself a new wallet. Um, so th there's that to take into consideration as well. But what it does, it does really well. In number seven, we have the Stealth Assassin wallet. Now, the Stealth Assassin wallet, I've had two of these over the years. One in brown leather, one in black leather. And it is, uh, it is for many, many years, the Stealth Assassin was the daddy when it came to mentalism wallets because it has so much stuff. It had an SUC peak built into it. It had another innovative peak built into it as well. Uh, it was magnetically locking. It had a index that you could index stuff. It had an out to lunch principle built into it. And one of the real golden things about the Stealth Assassin wallet is the instructional DVD that came with it, which I think is now on a download, which is incredible. It's still, in my opinion, the best instructions that have ever come with a wallet ever. Um, Peter Nardi went through so many different routines with the Stealth Assassin, so many different ways of doing it, so many different concepts. Um, just, just incredible. Hollywood or bust is one of the best mentalism routines that I've performed for years and years and years. It's so good. And the whole idea is that you have somebody, uh, 
uh, write down a film, they put it in the wallet, you get them to hold on to the wallet, uh, you have them think of an actor in that film, you tell them who the actor is and then they tell them the film. And the way it's constructed is just brilliant. The wallet is so smart. There's so many different ways of getting the information that you need from that wallet. Two different peaks built into it and it looks like a real wallet. It was one of the first wallets that came out that was a little bit thinner than other wallets because it's and not really designed as a magician's wallet, so there wasn't really a card to wallet function in there. It meant that it could be a little bit thinner and a little bit smaller. Now, it's not as thin as the Jameson wallet or the Nexus wallet or, you know, the Orphic or things like that, but it's still a very thin wallet. It's still a very good looking wallet, even today. I'd highly recommend this if you're a mentalist. If you are a mentalist and you want a really good wallet that you can blow people away with, there's so much built into it, and the instructions with this wallet are really really just really damn good to be perfectly honest um negative it's not really designed for card magicians because it's got an suc peak built into it you can do a no palm style card to wallet using the suc peak because that will kind of allow you to do the same thing but you're not going to be able to really do a sign palmed card to wallet or anything like that. But if you're looking for a good wallet and you're a mentalist and you want a whole bunch of info, uh, a whole bunch of different stuff in the wallet that it'll do, this is a great wallet to go. For. Talking about Alakazam in sixth place, we have the Jameson wallet. Now I love the Jameson wallet. Um, the Jameson wallet is actually for a long time became my go-to wallet that I actually took out and about with me because I don't really wear coats. You'll never see me wearing a coat. So I like to have a nice super thin wallet when I'm out and about. And the Jameson wallet is great because it's super thin. But even though it's super thin, it's got a ton of different credit card slots. So all of my credit cards and my membership cards could go in there absolutely brilliantly, no problem at all. And, uh, you know, I, it actually carries a whole bunch of everyday carry magic tricks as well. So you can get gossip in there very, very easily. You can get uh, another trick that's coming out soon through Alakazam in their uh, wallet range. Uh, which I can't say what it is, but that is perfect for the Jameson wallet. It really is. Uh, there's a whole, and, and still to this day, I've got a Jameson wallet by the front door and I would be more than happy to pick it up and take it out and, and use it. It's a super thin wallet. It's a very modern style wallet. It does card to wallet and that's it. That's all it does. It does the card to wallet, but gosh darn, uh, gosh darn, what? <laughs> what happened to me? Did I? That fall asleep and go to the 1950s. Well, God's died it. Um, what it does is it does really well. So this is this is a great wallet. It's um, uh, yeah. I mean, you don't really need a guide to load it either because it's quite long and thin. Um, and and what's nice is the zipper. I find that when you've got wallets with zippers, they can be very hit and miss. Some of them are great. Some of them are terrible. The zipper on the Jameson wallet works really well. So yeah, it's called the Jameson wallet. It's uh, it's well worth picking up. Um, you can get it directly from Alakazam. Uh, it's also got a couple of really nice routines on there as well. So you get a couple of really nice routines, you get the wallet, you get everything that you need to go for it straight away. If you're not looking for an all singing, all dancing wallet that does lots of different stuff, the Jameson wallet is a good option to go for, especially if you want a thin, modern looking wallet. So now we're into the top five. Now we are into the top five and in the fifth place, Fifth place, we have the Worker's Dream Wallet by Harry Robson. Now, Harry Robson was the undisputed king of wallets for many, many years in the UK. And uh, the Worker's Dream Wallet is absolutely great. Uh, it allows you to, first of all, it takes the bonsalopes that Dave Bonsal produces through Prop Dog. If you don't know what they are, they're kind of self-sealing envelopes in lots of different sizes. So if you've got a card to... Uh, envelope to wallet, for example, you can actually use the Bonsalopes absolutely brilliantly. They're designed for use with a lot of different wallets. The Worker's Dream Wallet uh, use these. Now, Harry has bought out many, many wallets over the years. I can't remember all of them. There was an Instant Reset wallet. There was uh, so many different wallets. The Worker's Dream, in my opinion, was the pinnacle of all of the wallets because Harry took what was good about all those different wallets 
and kind of combine them into one amazing wallet. And if you watch some of the videos on Magic TV, especially some of the older videos, you'll see me using this wallet, Killer Wallet. It had a peak built into it. It had Out to Lunch built into it. Um, it had a card to wallet built into it that you didn't need a guide for. The other thing it did really well, and this is really well, is it, it included um, Harry's instant reset methodology, which basically means that you can, if you do card to envelope to wallet, normally you have to prep the wallet in between each table. So if you do the trick and you take the envelope out, you then have to give the envelope away, they rip it open, the card's in there, then you have to go away for a few seconds, reset the wallet, and then you can go to the next table. With this, it's set up for the whole night. I think it holds 10 envelopes. So you can have 10 envelopes in there. So you can do card to, uh, to envelope to wallet, take it out, give it to the audience, and uh, and then and then you can order spectator, and then you you just zip the wallet up, and you immediately reset for the next table, which I think is a better thing than the hands off wallet. Which hands off wallet was great. That was another Harry Robson uh, wallet where they could open up the wallet themselves and take out the envelope and everything themselves. Very good concept, but in my opinion, the uh, the the, um, the workers dream wallet was the better option. It had so much stuff built into it. Um, but the, the, the actual card to wallet was done so well with that wallet, it really was. And the instant reset function is just a game changer for workers. It's why it's called the Worker's Dream Wallet. It's very good and it sits in fifth place. Okay, so in fourth place, we've got the Shadow Wallet. The Shadow Wallet by the 1914. What is the Shadow Wallet? Well, the Shadow Wallet is D. Christopher's wallet. It is an extension or an improvement on the Razor Wallet. When he worked with Penguin Magic, uh, D. Christopher brought out the, uh, the Razor Wallet. And then when he set up 1914, uh, he set about completely redesigning the Razor Wallet from the ground up. And what we were left with was the Shadow Wallet. Now, the Shadow Wallet is really not a card to wallet. It does two things. Things, and it does two things very, very well. The first thing it does is a peak. It's got a really great peak built into it. The second thing it does really well is it's got a thought of card in um, wallet in there as well. So you can bring the wallet out with a couple of business cards in there. You can put the wallet down on the table. You can have them think of a card and you can show that you predicted it because you've got one folded up card in the wallet and it's their card. You can then give them a business card, have them write something down, put it in the wallet, put it away, and you can tell them what they're thinking about. You've basically got a 10 minute act in your wallet and that wallet will also hold your credit cards, your money. It becomes an everyday wallet. What I like about this, a lot of the other wallets on this list, they require something else. What I mean by that is if you wanna have something work as an everyday wallet, and you want to take the Jameson wallet, for example, you're going to need a deck of cards with you because it needs a deck of cards in order to work it. Same with the Worker's Dream. Um, with this wallet, with the Shadow wallet, um, that's not the case because you could literally do a 10, 15 minute act with just the wallet because you've got this thought of cards wallet built into it. And then you've got this incredible peak as well. Louis Lavelle and D. Christopher sat down and went through the, uh, through, uh, through the wallet with a fine tooth comb. Everybody here that's watching this video knows I'm a big fan of Lewis and D. And the instructions on this wallet are typical 1914 quality. The point I'm trying to make is the Shadow Wallet is amazing and you should not overlook it. Even if you're looking at the, one of the latest and greatest wallets, perhaps even something that's been released by the 1914, you still need to look at the Shadow Wallet because the Shadow Wallet is very good indeed. Okay, so the next wallet in third place is the JOL Large Plus. Now, uh, Prop Dog, Dave Bonsall, have the rights to the JOL range of wallets. Jerry O'Connell was one of the greatest wallet makers of all time. I never forget sitting at the IBM Sam convention with Jerry O'Connell getting drunk with him and Simon Lovell. That was an experience I'll never forget. And uh, Jerry sold the rights to all of his wallets to Prop Dog, and Prop Dog now produce all of those wallets. And there's some amazing wallets in those ranges. And I really encourage you to go onto the Prop Dog website, go and have a look at the wallets that you can get from there, because there are some brilliant wallets that you can get from the JOL range. They've got some great Himba wallets, they've got some great Packet Trick wallets, they've got some great Card wallets. Well, the JOL Large Plus is a big, large wallet, and it's the one that I use. Probably, if I look back over my career, I have used the JOL Large Plus for a longer period 
than any other wallet put together in here. The JOL Large Plus is a wallet that I've used for a very, very, very long time. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. It looks a little bit more old school than more of the modern wallets. You know, your Shadow Wallet, for example, and your Jameson Wallet, they're designed to look like more thin, modern looking wallets. Um, but, you know, uh, you're a magician at the end of the day. You know, if you want to carry a, a larger, older school wallet around with you, there's no reason why you can't. And this is the daddy of a wallet. If you want to do a really good card to wallet, this is an absolute dream wallet to load. It loads like butter it really does and i've used it for years and years and years i would pick it up and do it again immediately it's that good uh if you want to do a card to wallet and you want a really top quality wallet then go and get the jol large plus in fact while you're at it go and check out prop dog and have a look at all the jerry o'connell wallets because all of them are really good in second place in second place we have the nexus wallet uh, the Nexus wallet by uh, Murphy's Magic. Now, this wallet came out about a year ago now, and what I love about this wallet is that it does so much while still looking like a super slim, modern-looking wallet. So it looks like a super slim, modern-looking wallet. It's the sort of wallet that you can take around as your everyday carry, but it's got so many features built into it. It's got a really cool, awesome looking peak and the peak is exceptional. It's got a great card to wallet built into it as well. It's got a whole bunch of different stuff that you can do with it. And I, I, I said earlier on that the best wallets are the ones that have a unique feature that no other wallets do. This has a unique feature in that you get an extra gimmick that allows you to do a visual change of anything that's in the ID compartment. So you could show, for example, your driver's license in there and change it into a playing card just by waving your hands over. It looks great. And Javier Quen Major, who created this wallet, is an absolute genius. What's also nice about this wallet is that you can take, you can adapt it to your own needs. So it comes with a money clip, for example, uh, which allows you to convert the wallet into a out to lunch. But if you don't want the out to lunch principle in there, you don't have to have the out to lunch principle in there. Just take the money clip out. Uh, the space to put your regular everyday stuff. So you've got space for credit cards in there. You have got space for money in there as well. It can be a little bit tight, but it is possible to put money in there. Definitely lots of slots for credit cards. Um, yeah, it's a great wallet. Now, the major drawback that a lot of people don't like about this wallet is it was not made out of real leather. It was made out of sort of faux leather, vegan, uh, vegan style stuff. And I know a lot of people are unhappy with that. Some people have said that it's cracked on them after a little while. I haven't had that. I have had no problem with this. I have used this at probably about 50 or 60 gigs. I've had it as my regular everyday wallet uh, for many, many months. It is a great wallet. Currently, Sarah's stolen it off me. Um, it's a great wallet and uh, it's capable of a lot and I've never had anything crack, I've never had a problem with it, but I have heard that on the grapevine that a few people are unhappy about that. I can't comment because it's not happened to me, but it's worth pointing out. Uh, if you're wanting, absolutely wanting a leather wallet, then this might not be the one you want to go for. But if you're a magician and you want something that's just got loads of really cool visual magic tricks built into it, this is the one to go for. The other thing about this wallet is Javier has created an incredible tutorial for this. I think it's about four hours long. Uh, him and Lloyd Barnes and Titanus put together an incredible tutorial with so many ideas and live performances. And you know I bitch and moan on this channel about creators that don't put live performances out and don't spend much time talking about the wallet that they that they've brought out or the trick they've brought out well have you done exactly the opposite here it's one of the most in-depth explanations i've ever seen and there's tons and tons of live performances so yeah the nexus is still one of the best wallets on the market it's why it's in second place and i would highly recommend it and then finally, in first place, we have the Orphic Wallet. Now, the Orphic Wallet is currently my favourite wallet. If you've seen my review show special that I did last Sunday, you'll know why. Uh, Dee and Lewis gave me this wallet at, um, 
the London Magic Convention and they said, hey, here's a plus size wallet. There's only one in existence. Can you do something with it? Can you come up with some routines? 10 minutes later, I'd come up with like three or four routines for this wallet. There is so much you can do with it. I, 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 on the project, I've included four of my own routines. And you know what? I sent D like 20 different routines. And he's like, oh my gosh, we've only got room for four. Please, can you reduce them down? But I've got a whole bunch of other stuff with this wallet that you could only do with this wallet. It is such a cool prop. First of all, the peak is diabolical. It really is. Because of how it works, it's psychologically very disarming. And you won't understand exactly what I mean by that until you watch the tutorial. Second of all, the big feature for me, and again, I go back to what I've said with a couple of other wallets, you need to have, for a wallet to stand out, it needs to have a unique principle built into it. I've never seen a wallet with a Himba wallet built onto the outside of the wallet before. But that's what we have here. We have a Himba wallet principle built into the outside of the wallet. Now, I'll be honest, I don't use this wallet for a card to wallet using a palm. I have tried it using a palm and it works absolutely fine. I've tried it with and without a guide. It's a little bit easier with a guide, but you could absolutely do it without a guide, depending on the size of your uh, pockets and so on and so forth. But to be honest, I just use it for no palm stuff because of how the principle is built into it. Because basically you've got three things here. You've got a switch, you've got a peak, and we've got a load. And the, the switch and the load work together so well you can openly load the wallet in front of the spectator and they won't realize that you're loading the wallet. I mean, that's what's beautiful about this. You can openly load the wallet in front of the spectator while they're holding onto it and they will not suspect that you've loaded the wallet. It is absolutely, completely and totally killer. Now, is this going to be the best wallet in six months time? Is this going to be the best wallet in a year's time? I have no idea. This list changes on literally a minute by minute basis. But currently, ever since November, when I was given my Orphic wallet, that has been my go-to wallet for both everyday carry, and it's also been my go-to wallet for gigs. The routines that I put on the project are just the, the, the uh, scratching the surface of what's capable with this wallet. Um, it's also great as an everyday wallet because there's plenty of spaces for you to put your credit cards. It also holds money, it holds your ID, it holds absolutely everything. It looks very much like an ordinary wallet, but it's got some devious stuff with, built into it as well. Uh, currently, right now, in my opinion, the best wallet that you can currently buy is the Orphic wallet. Mentalists have a great peak with multiple different ways of using it. Magicians have some killer routines that I've put on there. And that's the thing. The tutorial's like three and a half hours long. D is a fountain of knowledge when it comes to mentalism. Uh, his stuff that he's put on there about, he's got, uh, you know, like... Um, um, uh, drawing duplications. He's got like uh, stuff to do with Zodiac. He's got stuff to do with serial numbers. But also, as well as all of that, uh, you've got a PDF with a whole bunch of other ways of using the wallet as well. I think he's got seven different peaks that you can do with this wallet. Um, but then you've got all the stuff for the magician as well. And I talk about all the features and benefits and the way you can use this as a magician. So yeah, there's lots of different stuff you can do with this. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, I love it. It's called the Orphic Wallet. You can get it directly from 1914 or all good magic dealers. So there you go, guys. That is another uh, video in the bag. I want to know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. You've been asking for this video for a long time. I know that there's going to be people in the comments down below that go, oh, Craig's wrong. This isn't number one. This is number one. Look, this, this list is just my opinion. There are no bad wallets on this list. This is a list that in my opinion is how the state of the magic community is at the moment when it comes to wallets. I would be happy to buy any one of these wallets tomorrow and go out and perform for them. The number one wallet in my opinion at the moment is Orphic, but all of the wallets on this list are really good. Now it's over to you. I want to know what you think of this list. I want to know what your favorite wallet is. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Is there a, is there a wallet that I've missed off this list and you think that I'm <laughs> an asshole for not including this wallet? Uh, or is there a wallet that's on this list and you think I'm an asshole for putting the wallet on the list? I would love to know your thoughts. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, you know what you got to do. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again 
again tomorrow on Saturday with four videos. We're going to have a shorts at two, uh, 12 o'clock an honest trailer, six o'clock a live, nine o'clock an, uh, a Talk Magic interview. Uh, and the Talk Magic interview is going to be with the one and only Perseus Acromanis. This is amazing. He's going to be talking about scripting. He's going to be talking about his new production company, Orion Productions. And then on Sunday, we're going to have a Q&A at 12 o'clock, at 2 o'clock at shorts, at 6 o'clock at live, and then at 9 o'clock, a review show special. Guys, thank you so much for joining me again once again. I will see you again soon. Have an amazing weekend. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.